All right, it's 5 p.m. Central European Daylight Saving Time, CSAT. Welcome again to this SimScale editorial demo on air conditioning design and validation with CFD. It's a pleasure to be here with you. It's fine evening or fine morning, depending where you're at. My name is Pavel Sosnowski and I will have the pleasure of being your host today. Um, I've been working with SimScale for several years, almost from the very, very beginning, and I'm a customer success engineer, making sure that you are getting the best of the platform as you work through the topics. Um, whenever you have any questions, please put them during the talk. I'll be trying to answer them as we go. At the same time, if this is a longer thing, please forgive me for putting it on a side. There will be a bigger Q&A session afterwards. So it, might, it very often happens that uh, we end up answering the questions as we go. So do not worry about that. For those of you who will have to leave us earlier, or would uh, like to see, share this experience with your friends, we will be posting recordings of these sessions later online on our website and our YouTube channel. Very briefly to, to what we will be talking about, first we'll talk a little bit about the SimScale. <laughs> this is a mandatory part because I want to make you interested with the tool, but I'll spend as little time as possible on this subject because we want to jump to the topic of air conditioning in an office space, We'll have a little look about the case itself. Why should we use it? After that, we'll jump to a demo of the platform itself. We'll look through the results and end up and wrap up with a Q&A session. So, why SimScale? There are three things that we are improving about the so far available computer-aided design process. We are bringing down the accessibility barrier that was so far present since you don't need any hardware, any so well, the software itself is running in your web browser, which is mostly installed already on your computer. And we give you unlimited, almost unlimited computing power through a web browser, access to supercomputers, no more playing around, setting up your own hardware. SimScale is cost efficient. Well, if you want cost efficient, cost efficiency, log in for free and get access to all features that are available. And if you want to get a commercial deal, talk to our sales department. I'm sure you'll be very surprised to find how affordable we are. Finally, it's for everyone. This is just an example of a demo that we're making here to show, the to show to the community what is SimScale about and how easy it is to, to use it. But on top of that, there are lots of people who want to share their knowledge helping you start and begin your computer-aided engineering process and your computer engineering pr adventure. SimScale is an end-to-end -end simulation tool. You start with a CAD tool that you prepared using some other great uh, providers, such as, for example, Onship, who is our partner. You import it to the web browser, and from there on, everything happens online. You work with the meshing, you set up the simulation, and you can also visualize the results. After that, take another engineering decision, modify your CAD, and repeat the process in a semi-automatic way, which allows you to make design cycles extremely fast and extremely efficient. What's more to that? Well, we have multiple simulation types available, from internal flow simulations to big urban wind flow analysis, Gas, smoke extractions, heat thermal comfort analysis, to stress, uh, to stress part stress analysis, uh, vibration analysis, and particle analysis. This is all covered. For more specifics, I highly encourage you to join the platform, take a look what is there, or talk to our representatives through chat and other uh, means of communication. All right. I told you this will be quick, uh, but I hope that it already hooked you up on getting things done with SimScale and with the tool itself. So let's jump to the project overview. What is it that we're going to talk about today? Uh, we'll be thinking about ventilation problems inside office buildings and how to approach them. 
And the first thing is like, where can we actually apply CFD? And it is a great tool to make sure that you have a proper visualization of the flow patterns inside your domain. We can see the temperature distributions, we can see contaminants moving around, or how does the air actually transfer throughout the office. Keep in mind that so far, and whenever you read through most of the standards that are available, for example, ASHRAE standards, they are very specific when it comes to the overall bulk approach to the problem. You need to supply X amount of cubic meters of fresh air every hour for every person in a room. And yes, you should ensure that there is no, that inside the office you do not have a draft of 0.2 meters per second so that people don't feel cold. But at the same time, these are very broad terms. And if you have an office where you actually have a badly designed ventilation system, it might happen that we get to have a certain part of this domain not being ventilated at all, since the air is simply recirculating in a, in a pattern and not, exchange, not being exchanged at all. So this is where CFD comes in. Where would we think that CFD is not the best tool? Well, at this moment, having a very complex modifications or dynamic simulations of, for example, people moving inside the office in a transient way, that is a little hard to be approached. That's why we have a yellow small dot. And for extremely big simulations, while you can already run building simulations, and we are already doing that, for example, garage extractions, once you, you need to decide on the scale of the problem you want to deal with. Is it a single office space or is it the whole building with multiple offices inside? And once you are set up on a certain scale of the problem, there will be a certain amount of features that need to be included for a simulation to take place, which we'll do on the next slide. And where should we not use CLD? Well, an overcomplicated problems are the actual limit. So if you want to see a garage simulation or an office space simulation, it will make no sense or it will be possible to simulate flow around a paper clip that is lying on the table. There is a limit to the amount of simplifications and the amount of approach, well, the amount of details that you can involve inside such an analysis. Of course, on top of that, there will be some limitations on the type of tools that are available at the moment. So today we will be focusing on buoyant ventilation problems. So where we have heat, we have buoyancy effects, and we have forced convection. Uh, we can extend these models and depending on the problem you're dealing with, we can add, for example, smoke extraction or smoke propagation or other elements that are not covered. But this is, you need to decide on the specifics of the problem you want to deal with at the very beginning. Let's take a look at the overview of the project. This is an example of geometry that I prepared. Uh, we will be, let's think of uh, what kind of simulations we could do on such an office space. Well, first of all, the ventilation patterns. This is pretty obvious. We want to see the, the inlet directions. We can decide where should the inlets be positioned. Should we use the purple duct as the inflow or the introducing duct for the fresh air, or should it be the yellowish one? Maybe we want to have see what happens if we introduce the air from the side. Uh, we can immediately switch and very easily switch the direction of the flow. We can simulate different uh, scenarios uh, for external conditions. The windows might pose as be, for example, cold when we are dealing with a summer or winter conditions. We, want, we can switch on heaters that are below the windows. We can see what happens if there is smoke coming out of a laptop or one of the monitors. All this 
is possible with the CFD. And this is where we decide to mm, focus our attention. For today, as I already said, we will be talking about heat transfer and buoyant heat transfer problems. Now, what level of detail do we want to introduce within our CAD? Well, first of all, it is important to include all the elements that will actually be relevant to the flow. For example, notice on the picture on the left, there is a very small patch or face on the laptop side which will actually be introducing heat into the domain. This is the fan that actually ventilates our laptop. We also see the, the screen, the, the overview of the keyboard. This is not important and actually I included it only for aesthetics. Uh, it's much nicer to see something that resembles uh, the, the working tool we, we see every day but they are not necessary. Actually, if we would limit ourselves to have only the face that introduces the air into the domain, that would be sufficient. And obviously, these guys who are sitting in this office are pretty strong. They are just in this crouching position, standing eight hours. They have no arms. This is, again, a simplification you can take, but it's not necessary. You can include additional details like the chair uh, parts, like the chair legs or and arms. But the question you need to ask yourself is how much detail do you actually need? What is the influence of this one or two centimeter diameter leg of a chair on the overall flow pattern inside the whole room? Is it really important to put the, as I already mentioned, a paper clip that lies on the table? Not really. This is why we are keeping the geometries in a crisp form that actually represents the main obstacles to the flow and main elements that need to introduce um, the, the circulation. This is where this is exactly what is done on the and represented on the top right picture. You, I highlighted in red all the possible inlets and outlets from the ventilation ducts. I also made sure that uh, um, the areas of uh, the side ducts and the bottom ducts, of, which we'll see a little later, of the blue duct on the top, they're the same, so we can monitor very similar conditions. Last but not least, there are little features that also add additional complexity, but also make the problem a little more full when it comes to representing the actual physics. Below the door, I also added a very small patch which will allow for extra blow-by uh, and extra air exchange with the, uh, of the room with the corridor that is outside. You could add this kind of features also below the windows. Otherwise, we would have a room that is completely sealed and completely isolated, perfectly isolated, which is, not, uh, which is most time not the case in real life. There are small openings behind the windows, there are small openings below the door or around the door, which will also influence the overall flow balance inside the office space. All right. What we need to do afterwards is perform meshing or volumetric discretization of the flow space. I like to think of this as pix make, creating three-dimensional pixels that will later represent the flow. If I make finer discretization and create a finer mesh, I'll get a better precision of my solution. On the other hand, if I put too many of those pixels, or so-called control volumes, then the simulation will take much, much longer to calculate. The whole thing is to make a good balance between the amount of cells and the precision you want to get from the simulation. In this particular situation I also highlighted the important features so all the inlets and outlets plus the heat sources that will be present the explicit heat sources like the monitor uh, tops of the monitors or the laptop sides on top of that the people themselves will be generating heat which we'll see shortly in during the presentation now we have the mesh 
we already had an idea of the investigation scope, but let's make it very crisp. What is it that we'll be trying to compare? First of all, some fixed conditions. What will be happening all the time throughout all the simulations? There will be a certain heat flux introduced through the, the people. Well, we're sitting, we have a constant 36.6 degrees most of the time, and a certain heat flux that we generate. We make the rooms hot. Obviously, you can take these values, for example, from ASHRAE standards, and make sure that you are, for example, modeling a condition where the person that is lightly clothed, sitting in a, in a room, uh, and performing office jobs. We'll be introducing hot air through laptops fans and the monitor top surfaces. They will be passively heating. The lamps, there are two lamps, will be adding heat on top of that. And the windows will have, will be exposed to ambient air temperature. For the side wall, the one that is touched, like on which the windows are hanging, we will have, it will also be exposed to an ambient temperature, but all the other walls will be considered to be perfectly insulated. This would simulate a situation where we have rooms with a similar temperature inside a building. The variable conditions, so this is where we are trying to investigate the possible scenarios of our problem, will decide whether we should use the top, vent the top ventilation duct. Should it supply the air or should it work as the return? And should it introduce air through the side ducts or the ones on the bottom, so that are directly positioned towards the floor? When it comes to the side duct, the one that is uh, brown, brownish, we'll see that it, it will either be an air return if the top duct operates as an air supply, or it will be supplying air in the reverse scenario. Okay, now let's jump to the demo of the platform. After you log in, let me actually, uh, after you log in and open a project in, within SimScale, you end up with the standard overview and the standard workspace. This is where all the magic happens. We start by uploading the geometries. I already did that so that we have uh, access to this project. And actually, later through this webinar, if you look around, this is a public project available for everybody to see. And make, you can make your own copy, modify it, play around, use it as a template. It's all for free, available online. Either use this link, it will be provided later, or go to public projects on SimScale and search for room or office ventilation, office ventilation. Uh, there's quite a lot of those, um, quite a lot of projects. So you can see people are actually simulating stuff around. There it is, office thermal ventilation. Office Thermal Comfort, you can easily find it and have access to it. Once we open it, there will be two geometries. Actually, today I'm not covering the natural convective flow where we have no uh, air supply when the ducts are switched off. We have a second geometry which involves both ducts. The geometries were created in Onshape, one of our partners, very good online tool just as a side marketing, <laughs> try them out. Uh, we have a direct integration with the tool, but we also uh, support different formats. So you can import your formats with STEP IGS, which are and STL, which are standards, and also SolidWorks, Autodesk Inventor, and Rhino. We are extending the list of supported formats, but for most of the cases, at least for now, if you are using different tools, you should be able to export your, your parameters to STEP and import them to the platform. Okay, after having this done, uh, I prepared some simulation meshes. This is the 80% of the time that I spend is making sure that the meshes work, but uh, 
having a good tutorial and a good example always helps. Use the public project library to make sure that you are using your time in the most efficient way, especially if you're starting with the simulations. It's a mine of knowledge. So we have the mesh prepared. I was using a hex dominant parametric meshing. This is a, one of the types. A good way to start is always using the automatic measures. The, the only thing that you actually have to do when dealing with this, say I want to create a new mesh, when using parametric meshing is, no oh, sorry, the automatic meshing. Ah, trying to do it too fast. Is select how fine would you like your mesh to be and how big should be the machine that it runs on. You can add some extra refinements if you really want to, but that's it. You can start it and in most cases it will provide you with a reasonable geometry or a reasonable mesh for your problem. Okay, let's jump to the simulation design, which is the next step after we've prepared and generated a mesh. I'll create another simulation and this is the first overview you have through the possibilities that are given by SimScale. From incompressible flows to multi-phase analysis and stress analysis, drop test dynamic analysis to thermostructural and heat transfer problems. All this is covered, all is available for free from the very beginning. In this case we are dealing with a convective heat transfer problem. This will be forced convection, but on the, more on that in a second. We decide on how to, what kind of model do we want to use, what kind of approximations and so on and so forth. And here is the beauty of the platform shown for another time. We start with the setup, going through the navigator on the left panel from top to the bottom, entering every leaf of this uh, tree, setting up the properties and preparing our simulation to run. And the great thing is that all the workflows for all the simulation types are extremely similar one to another. And once you also have available an example project, for example like this office space, you can prepare your simulation in a matter of minutes. This is what this is what I'm I'm doing. Like right now, I'm making um, a very simple setup. Let's say we want to have an inlet. Let's say that this will be. Oh, I think I zoomed in. Sorry about that. So this will be inlet flow rate, volumetric flow rate, 0.1 meter per second, and let's say that all the inlets. All these inlets will be putting up air at this temperature. Fortunately, I already did all that and prepared one of the simulations. I highly encourage you to jump into the public project and see one of these uh, eight simulations that were done covering the setups of uh, reverse flow from the top and the bottom and having the left or right side um, taking air or removing it. After you finish your work with, uh, with the simulation, and once it is done, all these simulations, after they are being prepared, can run in parallel on supercomputers. There is no limit on how many simulations are running at the same time. They all can be uh, moving forward together. You can monitor the progress of your analysis uh, through uh, the residual controls and see how do they progress. This one was not very, uh, this was not, not converging very well, but it's a, a simplified example. This one is having actually a very much better, a much, it is having a better convergence. And once the results are done, we can go to the post processor, select what is it that we want to visualize and start the post processing. In this case, I am showing the threshold temperature. Let's see. The temperature that is below 310 Kelvin. 
again, we are having quite a lot of heat being introduced by these people and we can see a stratification of the case and the temperature, the hot air being gathered on the top. So a good choice would be to have the suction on the top or having the air being removed in another pattern. There are more possible visualizations that you can do. These are just a few uh, examples and I'm actually jumping through the screenshots I prepared. Let's go back to the presentation and take a look at some more sophisticated post-processing. There are two ways that you can deal with your data after you acquire your simulation. You can either work with the online post-processor, which has quite a lot of possibilities and quite a lot of uh, strength to it, or you can simply download your results and use your the tool of your choice. We actually encourage Paraview, which is the engine that also runs in the background of our post processor, which gives you access to very sophisticated visualization techniques and with some experience and tutorials that we are providing already online on our YouTube channel and on our site. You can get on board it and start creating images like that. So here we have a visualization of temperature slices through the office space, different scenarios where the top duct is using the side openings, these are the left pictures, and the top duct with the bottom openings that is introducing air um, is on the right side, and then on the, the, the two top pictures are showing the, the duct suction, the side duct suction, so um, the side duct is is taking is the return duct and then there is the reverse section you can see that there is a bigger stratification if the side duct is the one that is introducing the air uh, we will have cold air gathered on the bottom creating this stratified temperature profile this is another visualization this time I am plotting contours of velocity so this is I have, as far as I remember 0 0.5 meters per second so rather slow, but this is how the air will be rising up or moving. And this is colored by temperature once again. So we can see the stratification actually taking place and having an effect on the thermal comfort inside our office. Okay. This was the, the presentation of the platform and the presentation of the demo. I was trying to go through most of the interesting features and show some highlights of what is possible today. So for some wrap up, why should you use CFD? It definitely makes a better design decision. It allows you to make the better decisions earlier. Let's imagine that you already placed a ventilation duct inside the office and you find out after commissioning after finishing the commissioning of the installation that well it is pro creating this big stratification which makes it very uncomfortable for for the people inside it can cost you quite a lot of money and you can simulate this within hours or in worst case days with few iterations happening with different scenarios different positions all this is available why should you use simscale all you have to do to start with us is have a computer with a web browser. That's it. And who is it that can start working with SimScale? Designers, engineers, civil engineers, people who are who have their interest in making sure that their products and their designs are better. We welcome you all. The way to start? Open SimScale.com, sign up, or schedule a demo with our people. Try for free and see that this is definitely a product for you. All right, that will be it for the demo itself. Uh, I'll open the floor to any questions that you have at the moment. For those of you who do not have time or would, who are not that interested in the questions, thank you very much for attending. It was my pleasure to be your host today. So, if you have a question, I would really appreciate you first raise your hand with the GoToMeeting tool and then start typing so I do not miss any questions that are appearing. So please, be my guest. OK. 
Okay, let's start. Is it possible to visualize this streamlines that like the picture that you have here on the in online yes yes definitely I mean this picture actually was done offline uh, that uh, that I prepared here but at the same time you can do this online using the the post processor tools that are available let me just load one of the cases so you can definitely do this there's this the filter is called stream tracer it does not have all the features of, uh, like, you cannot control the thickness of the line, but you can definitely visualize the flow patterns that are available here. Okay, so let's give it a second. And in the meantime, another question. Uh, oh, let's take the, the latest one. How to analyze different diffuser types? Swirl diffusers, nozzle diffusers, slot, displacement, ventilation, and so on. This is a very good question. Actually, uh, I would split the, personally, I would split the problem in two. The first one would be to simulate, I would simulate the diffuser itself uh, as a completely separate simulation to see what is the flow pattern and can it be simplified to another uh, simulation, like another boundary condition. And then I would use this boundary condition as an input for another simulation. On the other hand, you can immediately decide to, oh, let me just go open the, the geometry. You can immediately decide to have different diffuser uh, positioned as, a, um, as the geometry part. So let's say that we would like to have some kind of a grid that is positioned on, on, this, uh, on this face. You simply have to model it in the CAD and then mesh it. But definitely it might take much more computational effort to resolve uh, the, the feature. So there is the possibility of splitting it and using an external boundary condition. Uh, this is the route that I would uh, advise to go. I hope this answers your question. Uh, does SimScale have different meshing options for complex geometries? Yes. So, actually, we are trying to approach the problem in two ways. The first approach is the semi-automatic approach that I was showing during the live demo, meaning that the only thing you have to do is select the geometry, select the type of mesher you want to work with, and how fine you want the mesh to be. As the goal for us is that this will work for 90% of the cases and you will not need to uh, play with the mesh at all. Actually there's a new thing, this is available I think only internally, this is the hex domain preview measure, uh, which, is support, which is the development part allowing you to, to get a pretty good mesh automatically. On the top of that, uh, you always have the second approach to meshing, that is the manual approach, where you actually decide on all the parameters, all the refinements, localize the improvements to the mesh, and so on and so forth. So you can actually model pretty complex geometries. This is a rather simple one, but uh, some turbine pumps, big uh, big geometries like of big office spaces. This is definitely a thing that can be simulated. Another question, uh, does this simulation take into account also humidity gains, uh, latent heat and so on? So at this moment, the models that we have do not support humidity. We are actually actively working on including this feature, but this is an extension of the model itself, which complicates the, the problem pretty much, so it's a thing that is uh, being developed at the moment. When it comes to latent heat, I'm not, um, like radiation models are also not included yet. Okay. What if I want to change the, the office space just slightly? Do I have to remesh the geometry? Yes, 
at this moment you have to modify the one if you modify the CAD you will have to remesh the geometry and reset the simulation so let's say that we would like to switch the position of the the laptops I don't know align them in a different way this would mean that you have to perform the meshing operation once again but the good thing is that you can use the semi-automatic approach so I can copy or duplicate the existing mesh and use so I'll make a duplicate here I'll delete the result and I can substitute the base geometry for the new geometry that I uploaded so let me just uh, do that notice what happened here this I mean this was a pretty um, complex uh, mesh that I was I mean I tried to do my best but both of them are duplicated so all I would have to do right now is to reassign the the refinements to the proper things in most of the cases you will have one or two refinements uh, to to work with which makes your life much easier and a very similar thing regards uh, simulation or setting up the uh, the simulation you can make a duplicate substitute the mesh and then simply reassign the boundary conditions Another question, can we also perform simulations for rotating geometries like compressors or turbines? Yes, definitely. There are, this is a very interesting thing. We have, uh, this is covered under what we call advanced concepts, where you can have, uh, for example, uh, rotating zones. This is not a part of the buoyant flow solver. It's being added as we speak. But for simulations like incompressible flow simulations or compressible flow simulations, let's give it a, actually I'll create a new simulation here. Um, this will be an incompressible flow. So there it is. Under advanced concepts you have what's called rotating zones. We support two types of rotating zone simulations. One of them is the arbitrary mesh interface where you have actually the mesh being rotated this is for transient flow simulations and the MRF multi-reference frame where you simply apply Coriolis force and centrifugal force to a certain area and this way mimic the presence of the rotation within the system so definitely on top of that for those of you who are interested in running office simulations we have a very interesting feature that is called momentum sources uh, these uh, these little things are actually allowing you to create virtual fans inside your geometries. So let's say that I would like to see what happens if there is a little jet fan somewhere within my model. All I have to do is create the representation of such, such an object. So let me just do it really, really quickly. So be one meter, let's say two meters, three two meters say where is it be zero point zero point one and zero point one so let's say that I would like to have a small fan on this wall for any reason all I have to do right now is add a momentum source and say that I want one meter per second of air being blown through this cylinder and we have a virtual fan or a virtual momentum source generating uh, flow motion within the simulation. There is another question. I can't find proper geometries for chairs and people legs. Uh, um, doesn't it, uh, will it affect the flow? So as I said at the very beginning, we need to make some kind of a decision uh, how complex do we want the geometry to be? I assume that the chairs these people are sitting in are very have very thin legs, so like one centimeter. Yes, they will affect the flow a little bit, but this will not be significant. So the question is, how many details do you want to include? Is it really important that you have a recirculation around the leg of the chair happening or around the door handle? Or do you want to put more uh, mesh refinements around important features like uh, the inlets, return outlets, uh, the ducts themselves, 
and so on and so forth. So this is actually a question. Uh, what kind of, how much precision or what kind of details do you want to include? What is it that you want to simulate? Another question, what is the size of the output data? For example, for this office. As far as I recall, the, so what I saved was uh, the initial time step, which comes with the mesh, plus the single time step, which contains all the fields. Once you download, it's around one gigabyte. I would say like 900 megabytes. This is strongly depends on the size of the mesh that you're using. The bigger the mesh, the, the heavier it is. Around 4 million, it's like 1 giga, 1 giga and a half. If you have 1 mig million mesh, I would say it's 800, 700 megabytes. Uh, another question, by momentum source, do you mean more mass flow gets added to the system or the same flow gets recirculated? This is the same flow being recirculated. There is no mass. It's actually simply adding momentum to the motion. So it can recirculate the same air. If you want to include a mass, you would have to add a boundary condition. So, yeah, so it has to arise from, from some kind of a boundary condition. And with momentum sources, this is just a recirculation. And actually, this is desired. If we want to model, for example, an actual fan, if we were to remove heat like consider it to be a black box. We would remove air from one side, like having a suction outlet, and then having an, an inlet of air. Um, right now, there is no direct connection between the faces. You cannot bind them together so that the air that goes in comes out from the other side. The momentum sources are the best way to approach uh, having this kind of recirculated air being uh, pushed inside the domain. Okay, any more questions? Okay, I still see some hands risen, great. Let's give it a second more. Can you modify the CAD immediately on the platform, so make modifications to the CAD. There are very small modifications that we allow, so you can scale your geometry. So let me just make a duplicate. So you can only scale the geometries as they go. Uh, we focus on what is our bread and butter, what we are best at, that is the simulations part, and we leave the CAD design to professionals who work with CAD every day. So for any kind of modifications, you need to perform them using different tools. So third party tools. So there's this geometry. I could add a geometry operation. So we can actually split STLs. This is used if you if you upload STLs, so you can make some scaling. A very good question. How can I learn to use this? Do you have some courses, or is it trial and error learning curve? Well. As with every complex tool, there is a learning curve, and uh, I will not be like putting it up front that you would jump in and immediately run a simulation of three office spaces with 50 people and convective heat transfer and all this stuff. But we provide a lot of tutorials and a lot of materials. So you can go to simscale.com, start, go to our learning section, there are a ton of webinars. There is a ton of tutorials. We have uh, SimScale Academy. This is a great place to to learn about um, about simulations in general. Some of the courses are free. Some uh, are you, you can pay for for some of them. You have all, a lot of webinars. This is just a list of some of them. The workshops that we organized. The content. It's really great, and you we are covering a lot of features, a lot of different uh, verticals. So this is a place to learn. On top of that, one of my favorite places to be is the Fo SimScale Forum, where you can interact with the community. Hundreds of people commenting and working together, 
sharing their knowledge, making sure that their problems are being solved. So definitely, this is a place to learn simulation. We are the place for simulations in general, not only SimScan, not only CFD, for simulations online. Okay. Uh, do you have plans to have support for Revit environment and DWG? Very good question. This is actually one of the most requested uh, formats to be added and as far as I know my colleagues in the engineering department are working on allowing direct input from Revit. When it comes to DWGs, it is it really the, it is not a, such a straightforward thing. We also have it on radar to to make sure that it is being included. I mean, this is one of the most commonly used formats. But for, from my experience, this will take a little more time since uh, we need to also make sure that we are deal, properly dealing with bad DWGs. So split edges, split faces. This would be have this would have to be a very clean geometry. For the time being, you would have to export it to step files. But get in touch with us if you have an interesting geometry you want to test, and we'll be very happy to help. Actually, I, I've, I've been working with several customers last week uh, who were doing simulations of a garage ventilation. That's why I've, I've been mentioning so this so much. And they are using Revit as their, as their CAD tool. So this is a there is a very nice workflow to make sure that everything works. Question: Can simulations be made also for negative temperature? Yes, definitely. Um, actually, in this case, uh, I've been working with uh, air conditioning. We are operating with Kelvin uh, scales. So if you use a temperature, let's say two hundred and 83 degrees then you have minus 10 Celsius so yes yes definitely in the end the whole concept is cold air goes down hot air goes up and you have to simply decide where is gravity pointing because well you can draw your geometry like this and then it's the y direction um, another question conda effect with uh, cold air um, could you elaborate on this a little bit more I'm not exactly familiar with the effect itself. Sorry about that. <laughs> so in general I would say that yes, uh, that would hold the, the air to the surface. So in general yes, this, this would work, but it's not, uh, it really would depend on the, on the quality of the mesh near, near the curved surface. So in, in principle yes, this actually gives me a great idea for, for another test simulation that I would like to prepare and later share with the public pro within the public projects. But overall, I, I would expect this to, to work properly. Another question, can we import geometries from other softwares? Uh, actually, when it comes to geometries, you have to import geometries from other softwares. So. Uh, a lot of our mm, customers use SOLIDWORKS, a lot of them use uh, mm, uh, use different, different. Uh, I think SOLIDWORKS is one of the pr predominant ones, but these are the standard for, so Autodesk also, Rhino, these are like the, the right now mostly used and mostly supported. Um, we are, we are working on adding Revit. Uh, when it comes to meshes, you can also upload your own meshes that you created with different uh, third-party tools. Uh, the only thing is that right now we are supporting only open form format, open form being the, the solvers that we are using for, for CFD. The X, 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 I'm sorry, this is getting, it's getting too much talking for me today. We, we extend the open form version with our own modifications to it and the MED UAD files. So if you prepare a mesh within the format, you can upload it directly to the platform and work with it. Okay, another question. Can, uh, again, back to the diffuser types, can I create own libraries of same product ranges or sets of products? Uh, 
this is not directly supported. So if you were to run a certain simulation that uh, would, for example, model a certain grill or a certain mesh that uh, mm, represents some kind of a, a diffuser that is introducing air into the, into the office space, you could use it as a standardized boundary condition, but you would have to upload it and uh, directly set up every time you run a new simulation. At least this is the, the workflow that is available right now. We would love to have also to, to include this kind of possibility of creating libraries of your own um, boundary conditions of your own virtual models that would be included into the geometry. But for the time being, it's not available. I'm sorry. Uh, Another, do we have modeling options to generate simple geometries? This touches the, the question of CAD models. So as I already said, we are focusing on simulations. We highly encourage you to visit our partners in Onshape or use any other geometry types. You can generate simple geometries, but uh, like uh, cubes and uh, cylinders, spheres, but these are only used to simulate some virtual uh, features. For any model uh, modifications, any, any geometry modifications, you need to prepare it in your CAD and then upload it. Another question, is it possible to, ma uh, to make generic algorithm optimizations? So automatic algorithmic uh, optimizations right now are not supported. We've been doing a workshop with cases uh, uh, with, with the producer of cases software that is friendship systems uh, who actually work on that and we're we're investigating the possibility of running a partnership together at the time uh, this is a semi-manual approach to actually have to create your own range of simulations and you have to manually set it up extract the data and optimize the geometries so this is a an interesting thing that we would love to include at some time but not yet, sorry. Okay, if there are any more questions, highly please raise your hand right now. Ah, there is, of course. Great. You mentioned uh, the bacterial spreading analysis. Does it include investigation of different pressure systems like clean rooms? Interesting uh, that you mentioned that. I had a, I, I ran a webinar on clean room ventilation some time ago. I think it was December. Uh, so if you go to look for clean room, clean room ventilation, uh, I'm looking if there is my project, or, but this was one of the <laughs> things. Actually, right now, uh, if we are talking about bacteria, we would uh, mostly consider them to be passive scalar transportation, so they would have no weight of their own, but uh, simulating uh, con uh, contaminant motion uh, in this way. So th there are certain limits to, to what you can uh, simulate, but yes, we actually have a customer who, who is dealing with uh, clean room ventilations and he was testing it. So This is actually a very simple setup. There's a contaminant being introduced through this gas tank and we're seeing how to remove it. What is the pattern? Where is it? Uh, how is it affecting people? So uh, when it comes to ho in hospital insulation rooms, um, this really depends if we are also including uh, how, t how watertight, how, how well insulated are we talking about. So if this is actually really uh, insulated system that has a certain amount of inlets and outlets and it has been kept at a certain pressure through some kind of an inlet, uh, some kind of fan system then yes this is definitely a thing that you can simulate you can see if the contaminants are being pushed or not let me see I'm, I'm actually looking for a different project the one that I prepared some time ago I know it was also shared. Ah, there we are. It has this, for some reason, it still kept the same thumbnail. So this is actually a, a setup for for a lab, a small lab, which has a, a laminar chamber 
and uh, there is some equipment that is introducing. We have a false floor with the return, some ducts. So this really depends on the on the precision of the model that you're going to prepare. And if you actually have a, a particular application you would be interested in, please get in touch with us and we will directly investigate your application and tell you, hey, this is the, the level of extent, this is the extent to which we can we can work with the model with the problem. In principle I would say yes. Okay. So we still have one minute, so if there's any more questions, if there's still at least one question, please raise your hand. Ah, there it is. There is a simulation also for uh, conductive heat transfer through walls, thermal bridges. Yes, yes, this is an advanced, con I mean, another simulation type. Uh, it's called conjugated heat transfer. Within this uh, application type, you can simulate uh, thermal behavior of both air and solid objects, like walls with thermal bridges. Um, let me see if I can find a... Simulation... CHT is the, is the go-to acronym in this case. So there's quite a lot of like, a lot of electronic schooling simulations but uh, you can apply the same methodology to, to an office room or any kind of room. Ah, this again, I, I'm, I was actually looking for my own simulation, because why not? Um, this is actually a simulation where I'm having a heater, I'm having a metal uh, frame that is also having a, some kind of a thermal bridge and a cover mm, that generates or, or reduce like oh this this is the the shot that I was looking for so this is the thermal bridge that uh, removes heat from the system from the, the room that was inside so yes we can do that okay it's been an hour uh, I would I think I know that there are many more questions. I would highly encourage you to post them. Either you can start your own account, type in the chat and talk with us. We love to, to hear questions. We love to help you with your own simulation projects. If you want, you can simply send us a message. There are multiple ways you can do that. I really hope to see you on the platform and working with you on the simulations and interesting engineering projects you deal with every day. For the time being, I want to thank you very much for attending this uh, editorial demo on office ventilations. It's been a pleasure. Have a great day and hope to see you soon. Pavel Sosnowski, signing out. Bye-bye. <laughs>